Quick, quick, Daisy! Team Foxy has a new video out! We've got to get to it! Hey guys, it's Robin here from Team Foxer, and in tonight's episode, we go cubbing with the guys from MGR. Cubbing, not clubbing. I try something a little different for a change. And we announce the winner of last month's competitions. Winning a Team Foxer hoodie, chance of winning one of these. Right, let's crack straight on with tonight's video. So at the end of a beautiful summer's evening, myself and the guys get in position nice and early down on the chicken farm and wait for the Charlies to come to us whilst we sit back, watch and enjoy some of the local wildlife that benefits from the vermin control here on the farm. As the light began to fade, Kazzy noticed a fox making its way through the chicken paddock, so I was first up using Natika to see if I could put a stop to this fox's antics. Unfortunately, and it's just a thing about this time of year with the grass being so tall, it was very difficult to get a bead on the fox using the NV through the tall grass, and as it made its way even closer, there became a barrier in between myself and the fox which was this chicken wire fence here so it wasn't really worth me risking uh, either damaging the fence or ricocheting uh, and, and making an unsafe shot so this one lives to fight another day as darkness fell it was time to break out the Icotec GC500 caller and try a couple of calls to see if we could entice the foxes to come to us With Kazzy using the Pulsar Thermal Unit and he's got the Scops 35 Pro which I've directly Wi-Fi'd to my phone so I can also keep an eye on the action whilst videoing through my camcorder. It's a great way of everybody keeping an eye on exactly what it is that's going on. All of a sudden we notice a fox making its way uh, across the paddock from left to right so Kazzy gets ready on the rifle, gives a couple of squeaks and readies himself to take the shot using the 222 250. Hey! Hey! Great shot. With the first youngster on the deck, it really wasn't long before number two was also in sight. Now as you can see the shot just went under its belly so the fox actually ran to the left. I lost it in the camcorder but I was actually recording through Andy Scott's thermal uh, unit and he did manage to capture it as uh, Kazzy took the shot and it certainly went down as you'll see central to the picture in the top left hand corner there. Despite the noise of the first two rounds, number three was along in just minutes. Now one of the major benefits to having a thermal spotter is the ability to be able to find your quarry. Now I don't know if you're anything like me but I've spent probably hours of my life searching for things that I've shot. Uh, the thermal spotter enables you to be able to walk straight to the static heat source because it's still going to be giving off a decent amount of heat for quite some considerable time after the shot's been taken. Yeah. Now believe it or not, as I was taking a photo uh, for the landowner's records, the guys actually spun round and noticed another big heat source over the other side of the paddock with a thermal spotter. So we managed to hot foot it over the fence and I managed to round the corner just as Kazzy was taking the fourth shot from this stand. So 
So as Kazzy hopfoots it over the fence into the darkness to retrieve the fourth fox that evening, um, myself and Andy were taking bets that it was actually going to be the fourth cub. Turns out it wasn't. It was an adult fox. As you can see, this one weighed in just shy of 15 pounds. So it's probably responsible for quite a bit of the damage that's been done. A couple of nights later and I'm out on a solo mission to the farm shop. I had a call earlier in the week to see if I could attend and take care of a fox that's been spotted in and around the chicken pens. Clearly this isn't what we're after but they are lovely to see these little things mooching around. I don't have to wait too long at the farm shop. Again with mouse call playing away with my caller up on a fence post this fox makes its way pretty quickly to the caller. In fact here it's only about well, less than 10 yards away so I'll stick the crosshairs on the shoulder, pull the trigger and the fox goes straight down with an almost perfectly placed heart shot. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, even though the fox is down and well and truly out, it still gives off a fantastic heat source. Now as I approached it, I actually stopped here and filmed another hedgehog slowly going through the fence with the thermal spotter there as I approached our fox. Are. This vixen, probably about 150 yards, actually probably a little bit less than that, but pretty close to the caller here. I could see it was a vixen through the thermal as I approached, you could see her. But I aimed dead on the shoulder, so it was quite quickly taken. Oh yeah, pretty convincing shot placement that. Jobs are good, and it's the last night out with the Scops 35 Pro thermal unit before this has to go back to night sight. Bit of picking up Wednesday. Great bit of kit, spotted her coming out from the left to right, straight to the call, straight to the mouse call, which is a new one I've been using tonight. Right, on to location number two, see if we can have some look there. What are you doing, buddy? Hey? You can sleep a little easier now, mate. On to stand number two that very same evening and I don't call any foxes here which is not necessarily a bad thing as some of the game birds will be released here um, relatively shortly but I did manage to call in using that same mouse call this lovely barn owl. A couple of nights later and I'm actually out right next door to the gamekeeper's house. They'd cut this pea field a couple of days previous and four foxes were actually spotted by the guy that shoots rabbits on this very field. So myself and the gamekeeper turned up early doors as and, and as we actually pulled in there were a couple of foxes mooching about. They ran off but they didn't take too long before they came back and as you will see here I actually fluffed the shot. That's right, it happens to the best of us and lots of you will often comment, God, does this guy ever miss? And I absolutely do, and there you go, that's proof of that. Enough said about that. Well, it would be enough said about that had I not missed the second fox that evening as well. So I actually missed two on the bounce. So I turned around to the keeper and said, if we have another chance at a fox um, and I take it and miss, then we will go home. We sim simply won't risk any more. Uh, but as you can see, the third fox did make an appearance and this one came into a very light mouth squeak as I'm now on top of the truck shooting off the bipod. I tell a lie, actually I'm not shooting off a bipod with this one at all, I'm shooting off my Primos trigger sticks. So it was a good enough result I suppose that we came away with one. 
However, because of the misses, um, I simply like to have the utmost confidence in my kit. And when you miss once, it gives you a bit of doubt. If you miss twice, it gives me serious doubt. So I stuck the box out. I think it was 120 yards, which is my usual um, distance to sight the rifle in at. And took a couple of shots so I could get a decent tight group, which is always going to be smaller than golf ball size. Once I can achieve that, I've got my confidence back in the rifle. So the very next night, myself and the keeper went back to the same location to see if we could make amends from the previous evenings. Slight difference uh, with this evening, I'm actually, instead of using my usual night sight, I'm actually using the PARD 007. This is actually the first time I've used this bit of kit in, in night time. You may have seen me using it for the squirrel videos and, and perhaps one or two others, but this is the first time I've used it at night and this is how we got on. Unlike the previous evening, it wasn't until it actually got dark that things started to move. The first thing out of the woods tonight is this handsome little roebuck. Much like the outing I had with Andy and Kazzy, the good thing about shooting cubs is they're going to be a little bit stupid. And it wasn't long before cub number two was out in the field. And as you can see here, there's something that catches this cub's attention. It didn't seem to matter how much squeaking and noise making we did with the caller and mouse squeaks, etc. This cub had his eyes set on something else. That one was quite a pleasing shot, I think it was the furthest one we'd had for a little while, it was probably a good 180 or so yards, uh, and Steve is actually just using the thermal spotter there to be able to conf confirm sorry, exactly which direction the heat source is, so we know where to go and retrieve it. Yeah, it was, I could see it, and it was looking at that, whatever that is there, look behind it. What's that on the floor? Ah, he was looking at that balloon. I could see it glistening. That's perfect. Can't see it barely. That was a long way, wasn't it? See ya. And just as the same as it happened the other night, we got back to the truck with the first and second fox. And as soon as we did, we noticed a heat source right over the other side of the field. It kept disappearing into and out of the undergrowth. Now, there didn't seem to be any necessarily reason as to why we would call this fox initially. It was actually making its way to us. But once it got within range, we did let out a couple of small, neat mouth squeaks to be able to try and entice it towards us. Um, it would actually be in and around seven minutes long believe it or not this footage but eventually it made its way close enough for us to be able to take the shot That's what I call redemption. Another successful outing for Team Foxer, certainly on this side of the pond. Let's have a quick look over on the other side of the pond to see how Jason's been getting on in New South Wales. What happened? 
Well, I'm not too sure what happened, but what I do know is that it's catching, I think, in the last couple of weeks with Team Foxer. That got him. Redemption is a beautiful thing. Right, ladies and gentlemen, let's find out who today's competition winners are. So the winner of the H1R Nova Head Torch is Rob Yorkshire, who correctly answered with the distance of 72 metres. There must be something about Yorkshire. I'm pretty sure we've had a couple of winners there before. And the winner and proud owner of a Team Foxer hoodie is Mr. Twig 1981. That's a great year to be born. Well done to you, a Team Foxer hoodie in your size is on its way to you. Make sure you're subscribed because we have more competitions coming up later in the year. But for now, take care, stay safe and happy shooting.